air goggles, bitches. It's time for some pop goulash. Uh, another week, another episode, and um, I got Bob on the old Skype Rooney with me today. Hello, How's it going, hello. Bob? It's going well. How are you? Doing well, man. Doing well. Um, what's been going on? Uh, not much. I watched. Um, I bought. Uh, on, on a digital copy of the Spider-Man movie that I, we talked about last time I was on, and I watched. Yeah, dude. And I watched it twice today. I watched it yesterday and watched it with the commentary track today. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Had this been the first time you see it? I can't recall. No, I saw it twice in the theater too, which I don't. Right I don't usually see movies more than once in the theater. I just liked it so much. Sure. If it's not, yeah, if I it's not th- Star Wars, I only go once. Right. 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 Yeah, <laughs> I saw that uh, it had. Um, uh, it, I saw it came out for streaming today, and I was like, "Ooh, yeah. okay." So now it's like, "Do I ask permission or forgiveness?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I was kind of in the same boat too. <laughs> so, because I, I know the kids would, you know, the kids are going to get a kick out of it either way, right? So, like, if I could get it with, oh, but babe, it's for the kids. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Normally, I would wait. To, I just wait for the. The Blu-ray. I I don't know why I prefer to just buy those over buying a license for streaming. Uh, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't really feel like waiting though. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I you know what I've really gotten away from physical movies, just because I don't know if we discussed that the last time we sat down, but yeah, I kind of got so. away from. Yeah, I kind kind of got away from actually buying DVDs and Blu-rays just because, like. I put them, you know, I, I get the download codes when I do buy them, yeah. and then the disc just sits on my shelf. Hmm. You know, it's just, it's just another thing to collect space. Sure. And really, even, it like, you know, the download and the disc are just a bunch of ones and zeros anyway, so <laughs> right. does it matter? I mean, like, I, I'll still, like, collect my albums and, you know, my uh, my CDs and stuff like that, but, like, Movies, eh, I just I'll just get it digitally. I don't I don't buy Blu-rays very often unless unless I really really like the movie. I'm sure. I actually tend to do a lot of renting either at Redbox mm-hmm. or sometimes if I'm feeling particularly lazy, um, I'll just I have an Apple TV. I'll just rent it from iTunes for a day, but that's a, sure. that's a lot more expensive. But I also am the worst person in the world for returning Redbox movies. Yeah, <laughs> that makes two of us, dude. Like, that's why I don't even go to the... I Like, it's very rare I even go to the library because, for one, I'm a slow reader. <laughs> yeah. And two, like, it literally will take me... Like, if it's due on March 31st, that shit's getting back to the library eh, probably about May 2nd. <laughs> if not, like, you know, May 30th. I, I haven't, I'm just I haven't, that got, I haven't gotten... Gotten a book from a library in a long time. I, I remember fees were like twenty five cents, like a, a day or a week or something like that. Or have they gone? Yeah. Have they gone up since then? I have no idea. Yeah. All I know is that you just we've had to buy now. a couple. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've been taking the kids to the library because we want to make sure that the kids have books. Oh, of and course. Know that there is a thing called the library. Right. So, um, yeah, and it's it's just kind of crazy, you know, but. Because I'm going to go, I'm taking the kids to the library tomorrow after they get done with school because it's a, uh, what you call it, it is um, story night mm, where yeah. like, you know, they uh, the kids come in, they read a story to them, they do an activity and then it's go the fuck home. Yeah, I remember doing that so, when, I was, when I was a wee lad. See, I don't recall things like that. That or my mom just never took me to show like that. <laughs> I'm guessing it's probably more the latter than the former. Mine was always in the morning, I remember, like like 9 a.m. or so and it was always kids in the summer yeah uh yes that would that's yeah. that'd be the only thing that makes sense and it was kids right be, like there and the moms would sit in the back true right yeah so back then it doesn't, doesn't have to yeah. be that way i'm not saying it has to be a mom sitting in the back <laughs> right well you know whatever it is what it is or isn't right <laughs> so so what's been going on man what else have you been up to um, I don't know. Uh, watch the Oscars. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. Normally, I'm <clears throat> normally I'm a lot more current with having seen all the uh, 
like the uh, best motion or the best picture like nominees and things like that but i'm kind of behind on that right right i've seen a lot of backlash about green book winning but yeah i've i haven't seen it but i've heard it's a pretty bad movie yeah i think people were saying it's the worst uh best picture winner that they can think of well, yeah i i saw that I, there was a, somebody wrote an article about it and it was going around for a minute but it's you know i guess it's like um the the dude whom the movie is written about is uh yeah like the african american fellow like he was almost ma- he was made a secondary character in a movie that was or from a a movie that was based upon a book that was about him hmm. you know and i guess his family was like his family like shat all over the movie too I guess that kind of makes so, sense because I'd seen people talking about how it was like white, like a whitewashed story, but I didn't really read into that. Yeah, like I saw one article, and I don't, I can't remember where it was from, BuzzFeed or something, where they're like, "Yeah, you know, it's the big savior white man coming to show the black man how to be a black man." I was like, "Okay, mm-hmm. that's weird." I mean, I kind of want to see it just to see what all the fuss was about. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like I don't really care. Neither do I, but. Mahershala Ali is pretty He's much fantastic. phenomenal in anything he does. He was the Absolutely. only reason I continued to watch the first season of Luke Cage. Really? I actually liked Luke Cage. I liked both seasons. I did not care Cage. for it very much. I I made it three episodes in the second season, and I, I just lost all steam. Dropped it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. He was so good in that show, though. Oh, he was fantastic in it. He was fantastic as Copperhead. So... But yeah, Lady Gaga got her got her Oscar, so now she only needs a uh, what a Tony for an e- yeah. for an EGOT for an EGOT, yeah, or an, and an Emmy. She needs an Emmy as well. Mm. So, but yeah, I think she got robbed for Best Actress, and and everybody's like, her. What about Glenn Close? This was like the eighth time she's been nominated in the zero time that she's ever won. I don't care. <laughs> I I have I I no I don't mind. She's just I don't know something about Glenn Close. I don't, I don't dislike her. I've seen I've seen plenty of movies in her uh, that she's in that uh, I think were fantastic. I just I'm just never like completely. I'm not like Daniel Day Blue uh, Daniel Day Lewis blown away by her though. Right. Well, I mean she's you know she she's not a Meryl Streep. No. I mean she's good. But she's got, uh, I think she holds the record now for most nominations and no wins. Mm. She's crying all the way to the bank. <clears throat> yeah, right. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I think Lady Gaga should have got it. I didn't see the uh, the movie that the lady that won, uh, you know, the, I, I the only favorite. saw a handful. I, I have not seen it either, but yeah. I want to, because isn't that maybe the same guy who did The Lobster like a year or two ago? I think so. I like killing lo- a, I like the lobster he do, a lot. Didn't he also do Killing of the Sacred Deer? Yes, I think so. Okay. I've heard good things about that, and I saw that Lobster is up on Netflix. It's in my queue right now. It's a good, really, really weird movie. Okay. Cool. Well, it's also got Emma Stone in it, so I'll pretty much watch anything <laughs> that she's in as well. Yeah. But I'm also one of those that's like, I don't think, you know, I don't watch Emma Stone movies because I th- find her attractive because I... I don't. Mm -hmm. I just think she's a really good actress. Yeah, totally. You know, I've liked her in everything that I've seen her in. So I still think I can't remember if we talked about this. I still think the best thing she's done is Maniac. Yeah, she was excellent in that. Yeah, she was absolutely phenomenal in that. I think she was really good in Birdman as well. Yeah, totally. And I know people shit all over that movie too, which I don't know why. Neither do I. I think I think that movie is great. Yeah, I mean it. It I I I enjoyed the aspect where they kind of uh, what was that Inaratu that did that? Who did that? Yeah, you know, yeah. He he uh, he kind of copped a uh, um, what you call it? Um, oh, you cut out a Hitchcock like you with there? rope. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you just cut Wait. out for a second. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. But yeah. I'm gonna make, make I'm yeah. gonna make note of the time so I can sort of snip that. Uh, don't even worry about no. Don't snip anything. Just send me the file. Okay. 
because I'll snip it on my end or I'll leave it in. Okay. So. All right. Depending on how like, because it wasn't that bad of a of a flub. Okay. So. All right. So, but yeah, um, but like I had a friend of mine who was like, oh well, the movie is just uh, you know, it's very predictable, yada yada yada. I'm like, I don't care. Like it was, it was filmed in almost. It, they tried to do like what, uh, um, oh, what the shit, uh, <laughs> Hitchcock did with Rope, yeah, to make it like a one continuous shot movie, right? And I mean, obviously it wasn't, but it was still like damn close and damn good. Yeah, that's cool. You know, so. Uh, what about yeah, totally uh, do. what about like um, what did you think about uh, Bohemian Rhapsody? Did you see it? Um, I haven't seen Bohemian Rhapsody yet, but right. I've heard very very good things about it. See, I'm wondering why why people love that movie so much because I saw it. Uh, my wife and I watched it last week, and mm-hmm. uh, I thought it was there were some some good parts. Some really strong parts, but I thought it was a pretty awful movie. Really? Yeah, I I couldn't believe the Hold acclaim it's been getting when, when we were done watching. I it. might lose you um, if so. Uh, the best part just was call me back. I think I'm going to shut my Wi-Fi off and I'll turn fact, it on to uh, just my. Uh, I guess we had rented. What's up? All right, you still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just shut off my Wi-Fi and went strictly to my. Uh, uh, Ethernet just to see if because my uh, you were breaking up pretty bad. Oh, okay. So you were saying uh, so about because I yes. I had said that uh, um I had not seen it yet. And you were wondering what the big hype was. Yeah. So my wife and I we rented it and um and I, when we were finished we couldn't like understand the acclaim that the movie's been getting because it was there was so much of it was just so like un like not literally unbelievable like how they came up with writing their hits it's just like oh Brian May came up with this stomp stomp clap beat and it's just like instantly turned into we will rock you like there's no way that any of the songs were written even remotely like they're portrayed in that movie it was it was literally unbelievable huh well i mean though like Brian May and um uh, was it Rick Taylor the no, Rick Taylor wasn't he the drummer of Def Leppard? Whoever the drummer was of Queen, uh, Roger Taylor. Yes. Those two, they were pretty heavily involved in the in the um, movie making process, though. That's what I hear as like consultants. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I mean, I I know a little bit about writing music. I've tried to do it before. There's no right. way. There's. I. It was. It just felt like what should have been like a mini series crammed into like a two hour film. Yeah, it was. I did it just hear that. it just absolutely raced through the timeline. Yeah, I know that uh, listening uh, to uh, Fat Man Beyond, uh, Mark Bernardin pretty much said the same thing. He was like, "Yeah, it just it was like, oh, look at this this thing, and then oh, this thing happened, and then oh, this thing yeah. happened, and then oh, this thing happened, and oh, here they are at Live Aid, the end." And I think that the version that we rented was some kind of special cut at the end. Um, mm-hmm. because, yeah, they said that they recreated the entire Live Aid performance th- or something. That was actually pretty fucking cool and well shot and looked great. And uh, I can't remember the guy's name who sang those songs, but he sounded... Very... Freddie Mercury? <laughs> no. The guy who sang the songs for the film. Was it not Rami Malek? No, it was not. It was uh, some guy from some cri- contemporary Christian band uh, who's gone solo. He's Canadian. I don't remember his name. Was it the Was it the dude from Striper? No, isn't that like Michael Sweet? Yeah, <laughs> no, it was not Michael Sweet. Um, it That's was some. Hilarious. It was some of the guys, a, a small to mid level like music solo musician, um, and huh. he just does like a pretty dead on Freddie Mercury. Interesting. Yeah, I can't remember the guy's name though. I I, I don't think he's his music. I can is hear you like frantically typing, trying to find it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm trying to touch quietly. Trying to see if it was on uh, IMDb, and I'm not seeing it. Well, then that guy deserves the Oscar, not Rami Malek. Uh, He was pretty good, too, though. Yeah, I heard. I heard. You know, it's funny. Until, like, 
Did you hear when he? Did you hear that he was good when he was winning an Oscar for it? <laughs> yeah. Oh well, you know what? It would also help if I was looking at We Will Rock or at Bohemian Rhapsody, and not yeah, Birdman cut out again. Because Birdman, how am I not connected to the internet? Okay, I hear you now. Are you there? Hello? 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 Bob? Bob? Hello? I lost you there. Yep. I can hear you now. All right, that's weird. Stupid Mac. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so we were looking for Bohemian Rhapsody to see if we could find who this did the guy's voice. This guy's Mark Martell. Mark Martell? Yeah. He sounds like a professional wrestler. This this article describes him as a Canadian Christian rock singer. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's one strike against him. Yeah. So, I mean, he sounds good. Nobody knows his name, though. Right? Who? Yeah. Interesting. Man, they had a ton of uncredited people in this movie. Bunch of extras. Oh, yeah, for the Live Aid sequence at the end. Well, no, not even... I mean, some of it was Live Aid stuff, but it was like floor manager, guitarist, roadie, hmm. raver, Madison Square Garden audience. Like, one dude, two dudes for the entire... <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's funny. Tour bus driver. Like, There's a ton of guys in here that were just like... Interesting. Yeah, it's one of those that I'll eventually see it because I'm a queen. I do enjoy Queen. Sure. But I'm not like quickly. I'll, I That might be one that I'll, uh, I can wait for it to get to. Uh, like free streaming? Uh, yeah, I'll wait for it to get to, to, to Netflix or something. Mm-hmm. So. And I, I think it's funny that Brian Singer still has director credit on it, even though the fact that he got fired like halfway through the movie. Yeah. And because he's so. and because he's a rapist piece of shit, so yeah, he's <laughs> not good. <laughs> he's not good. Yeah, he's not. He's <laughs> not good. You know, despite the fact that he did make two really, really awesome X Men movies, he's still kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> so, did you see Star Is Born? I did not. Oh, dude, that one. That was the one to watch. Was uh that was was Bradley Cooper's singing better uh, than it was at that performance because he sounded pretty bad. You think so? Yeah. I didn't think so. He did not. No, I, he did not. He was not passable as a professional singer, especially well because he's especially sitting not. sitting next. Yeah, but we've seen people do it do it pretty well before. He was he was good in the film. He was good in the film. That's good. Like, I mean, who knows how long it had been since like. He had uh, performed last. You know, he might have had like, oh shit, I'm on stage in front of real people, and I'm also like on camera. You know, um, amongst you know, watch uh, about a million people or two million people or however many what the rating was for it. How many people were watching him live? I mean, he could have had just some jitters. Hmm. Sure. So, <clears throat> but yeah, it was good. Like, um. You know, I, I got mad respect for him because, you know, for one, Bradley Cooper, had, he directed it. It was his directorial debut. Yeah. Um, he studied with um, Willie Nelson's son for like six months, learning how to play guitar, how to write songs, and how to sing. Nice. And he wrote a good chunk of the songs in the so- in the soundtrack. Hmm. Uh, he and Lady Gaga, actually, both. So... Like, for that alone, like, I'm like, that should have, you know, I don't know. I got more respect for that than I do, you know, um, you know, Rami Malek playing Freddie Mercury. Right. You know, wh- whatever. Sue me. <laughs> so, but <clears throat> but I'd like to see, I ha- have you seen Roma yet? I have. How was it? I liked it. it was Did a, you? It was a very, like, kind of low-key movie, I guess. Really? Yeah. It was good, though. Yeah, I was surprised that uh, that it was a you know, the Netflix thing actually took off and actually you know, uh, 
was nominated for Best Picture, and it won a gang of Oscars too. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, because it haven't haven't hasn't the Academy like blacklisted Netflix films in the past or something? Well, yeah, because they're not usually traditionally released, right? Um, I know that Roma was in like some independent theaters, so I wonder if that's how they like got around it. That is how they get around a lot of it. Okay. So even if it was just on Netflix, they probably would have like it would have twisted the Academy's arm because it wouldn't be an Academy Awards if Alfonso Cuarón wasn't winning something. Seriously, yeah. and rightfully yeah, so. Cause... The guy's one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. I think. Really? Yeah. Really? I love his movies. I I I think that uh, Children of Men might might be my favorite science fiction movie of all time. If you can call it science really? fiction, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a good movie. I I liked it. Those, um, those two ultra long, like no cuts, like shots. Mm-hmm. I think about those all the time. Really? Yeah, because they were not not only were they long long shots, um, they were like long action shots. Right. Yeah. Did you huh. see the? Uh, I, did you see the I'll first? Have to watch that again. Did you see the first season of um, True Detective? Yes. So you know the the infamous. I think it's a couple episodes into the season, uh, with Matthew McConaughey back undercover, and they're running from like crack house to crack house. Yeah, yeah. That also used a super long shot. It instantly instantly made me think of uh, uh, Children of Men. Curon. Really? Yeah. I'll have to rewatch that because it's been a long time since I've seen it. I also kind of miss. I also kind of miss seeing Clive Owens. I like him, and I I don't think he's been in anything that I've seen in a long time. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a good point. He also did E2 Mama Tambien. Yes, which I actually saw that in the theater. I did not. I saw that way later, but I like that movie a lot. It was good. I did. Oh, he did Great Expectations as well. I never actually saw the movie, but I did. I do have the soundtrack. The soundtrack's phenomenal. Hmm. I don't think I remember what that sounds like. Um, it, it was a largely British uh, soundtrack, hmm. although it did have a couple really good Tori Amos songs on there. So, and uh, let's see, Children of Men, yeah. Paris Jetemy, he did a segment on that. Uh, Gravity was fantastic. I really dug Gravity. I thought it was good. I did also, that's another movie. I didn't really understand all the buzz about it. I thought it was good. Well, I think it was just the fact... For me, it was that, uh, you know, uh, Sandra Bullock carried the movie by herself. With the exception of, like, 15 minutes that George Clooney (laughs) breezed in and breezed out. Yeah. You know, and she won the... Did she win the Oscar? She didn't win the Oscar for that, did she? No, 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 no. She did not. I think she was nominated, though. I think she was. Yeah, it won seven Oscars, though. Yeah. Cinematography, directing, editing, music for the score, sound editing, mixing, visual effects. Hmm. Yeah, and Sandra Bullock was nominated for the Oscar that year, but she did not win it. Who did? I don't know. Huh. Yeah, what year was that? That might tell us more. 2013? Yeah, I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> No clue whatsoever. Huh. But I was glad to see that, uh, what's his name, Ludwig Gorenson, uh won for Black Panther for the score. Yeah, it was good. He, um, well, he is, he's done most of the work for uh, Childish Gambino. Oh, no shit. Yeah, he's produced, I believe, all three of his albums and did a lot of the music for all of those albums as well. Oh, uh, I know. I've seen him. I saw like a uh, just just like a YouTube video of a, a live performance of one of the songs off of his last album. I don't remember which one. And he was playing yeah. c- totally playing guitar on that. I re- I remember that now. I didn't put that together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing. Oh, dude, he's doing the soundtrack for the Mandalorian. Oh yeah, he's doing the score for that. Yeah, man, he's got a gang Is that of like credits the, the for the show that's coming. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He did the score for Venom for Creed. I think he just did Creed two. No, he did both Creed movies. Hmm. 
Seems like he did a, the music for. Seems like a very young fellow to be winning all kinds of awards at school. Yeah, he is. Uh, damn, 1984. He is young. Uh, he's barely older than I am. Yeah, he did the the. Let's see, Central Intelligence. Uh, wow, surprisingly, he only did the music for one song in Atlanta. Surprisingly. Huh. I love that show. Yeah, I just started watching it recently. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Second season kind of changes a lot. It becomes more... That's what I've heard. Like That's what I've heard. Each episode is kind of its own standalone thing. And I think the, mm-hmm. the format change was really good. Right. Uh, let's see here. He did pretty... It looks like he did pretty much all of the... Uh, all of the su- the music for Community, huh? So Which is I believe. So he has a, a serious connection with Donald Glover now, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it looks like he did. Let's see, what is this here? Yeah, he was the composer for all of it. That's cool. Yeah, like this, he's got like sixty credits to his IMDb. Yeah, good for him. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, I I dug that. I I. I'm surprised there wasn't more backlash about, you know, this hippie-looking white dude scoring <laughs> Black Panther and winning the Oscar for it. You know, I would I would assume that, you know, people would be like, well, why didn't, you know, why wasn't an African-American doing the soundtrack? I, but I, shit. Maybe if it was, like, closer to release. Possibly. Yeah. Swedish dude. Is he Swedish? So, yeah. I just yeah. assumed it was German with a name like L- Ludwig. Ludwig. Yeah, no, it's yeah. He was born in. Uh, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> Linköping, uh, somewhere in Sweden. All right. But bork bork bork. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was good. I I was glad to see that. Um, uh, sh- Nikes. Uh, Regina King got her Oscar. I didn't. That was I cool. did not see that. I really want to because she's she's a tour de force. She's amazing in everything. Yeah. Well, it's funny because the very first thing I think I ever recall seeing her in was um, Friday. Oh. She played. She played Craig's sister in the original Friday. Oh uh, yeah. First thing I can remember seeing her in was uh, Jeremy oh, she- Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah. yeah, she was in that. Oh, dude, I saw her in because uh, I've seen Boys in the Hood and Poetic Justice. She was in both of those as well, mm. and Higher Learning. Man, she did a lot of stuff with uh, Ice Cube. She was in three movies with Ice Cube, huh. and then also in Poetic Justice with. Uh... Oh damn, she was in Two Two Seven. I used to watch the shit out of that show when I was a kid. <laughs> huh? Yeah, she's been in a bunch of stuff. But my uh, my friend Paige, who was supposed to be on the show this week, uh, she actually worked with um, Regina King on... Nice. Oh, let me see if I can figure out which movie it was. Uh, she did some TV movie. In what, uh, in what capacity? What did she do? She was an actress in it. Oh, cool. And I think she directed it as well. Oh. But um, But yeah, my friend Paige worked on her with it or worked on it with her, and she said that Regina King is just an amazing woman. Hmm. Just completely awesome. I think it's where the truth... No, not where the truth lies. Not sure. I I looked it up last when I was talking to her. Um, But yeah, it was some some TV movie, and she said it was phenomenal. Hmm. She said it was great. So... She was one of my favorite characters in the second season of The Leftovers. She was really good in that show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just saw that she was in there. Yeah. Oh, Let the Church Say Amen. She directed it. Huh. And that was the one that was the one that uh my friend Paige worked on. I'm not familiar. Yeah. Uh, it was some it was a BET movie, cool. actually. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So But yeah, I mean, but then again, like I really dug her when she was on the Boondocks. Uh, Regina King? Yeah. Did you ever watch the Boondocks? Yeah, here and there. But she played Riley and uh, um, Riley and Riley's brother. She played the two boys. Wait, what? Yeah, Riley and Huey. She was Riley and Huey on the Boondocks. I had no idea. Yep. 
That's crazy. Yeah. Totally. Huh. And apparently she's going to be on the new Watchmen TV series, which I see that as well. I didn't know about until somewhat recently. Oh, really? Yeah, it's going to be an HBO show. And it's Damon Lindelof. Is it? He's doing it? Oh, yeah. Interesting. That's what got me excited. And apparently, yeah. And apparently it's like, I don't know, because it doesn't sound like the Watchmen. At all, I think I read somewhere on Reddit that it's it's a it takes place after after the the, the Watchmen okay. book and film whatever. Gotcha. Yeah, because it looks like Jeremy Jeremy Irons is playing Adrian Veidt. Oh, I didn't uh, see that. I haven't looked at any of the casting. Yeah, let's look like Luke. Got, let's see, Jeremy Irons. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, I think the other thing they said is that it's going to be modern day. It's that universe modern day. So that makes sense right. why, why he would be so old then. Right, right. Lou Gossett Jr., Don Johnson, Don Regina Johnson. King, Tim Blake Nelson. Is looking glass. Yeah. So I wonder I wonder what they're going to do. Like, what do you do with that? Yeah, I don't know. What do you do? It, then Who, who's playing... Uh, Doctor Manhattan. It's he's not in it. It doesn't look like he's got to be. Yeah, unless it's like Don Johnson as an old. Yeah, Doctor Manhattan. Right, but yeah, nobody else. I mean, there's no like, um, Silk Spectre would be still alive during the yeah the yo- during the, it the younger... you know like yeah yeah yes. Yeah. And, you know, because I think the only one that really got killed, I mean, Comedian got killed. Yes. And um, uh, Rorschach ended up getting killed. Yeah. But didn't that he, was didn't it. He like explode or something? He Yeah, Dr. Manhattan killed him. Yeah, and he's like he's like yelling at him to do it. He's like, do it! And then he, yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Mm-hmm. But I've read the book like three times. Yeah, I've, and, I've read you it know, twice. And then they... And they've done like the before Watchmen series, and that didn't have any of these people in it. And then they're doing uh, right now. They're doing uh, DC is doing a series called um, Doomsday Clock, hmm. which takes place in the DC universe. But for whatever reason, Doctor Manhattan's breaking into the DC universe. Who's making that? DC. It's not a movie. It's a comic book series. Is it out? Yeah, yeah, it's it was it's uh, supposed to be a twelve issue miniseries, Ooh. but uh, uh, they've only got six out so far, huh. and it's just taking forever for uh, uh, Jeff Johns to to write them and get and Gary Frank to get them out. Huh. It's been a real pain in the ass. Is Doctor Manhattan a protagonistic or antagonistic character? Don't know yet, huh. because. They haven't explained shit because they're only six issues in and haven't really gotten to the point of like what's going on. Like there's a Rorschach, a new Rorschach, and you come to find out that it, the psychiatrist that was treating Rorschach while he was in prison, yeah, his son becomes the new Rorschach. Uh-huh. So and he's here in the new like he crosses over and then like um. Osmandius crosses over, and then in, I think in the last issue they put out, for some reason, Comedian comes back to life. But they <laughs> they haven't explained it yet. Yeah. So I need like, to look this up. Yeah, it's called Doomsday Clock. And like I said, there's six issues out. I'm sure that you could just run to Graham Crackers or Chicago Comics, and they'll have it. Huh. Cool. But it's actually it's for for <clears throat> as corny as it sounds, it's actually pretty well written. I'm kind of a sucker. You know, I'm kind I'm, of a sucker for comic book crossovers. Yeah, yeah. So, and it all started with Rebirth, with the original Rebirth, uh, DC Rebirth. Huh. Because at the very end of it, Batman pulls like takes a, a rock away from the wall in the Batcave, and you see uh, the comedian's button <laughs> hidden in the wall. And then they did a four-issue run between Batman and The Flash 
where like they start kind of crossing over in between worlds. Yeah. Between the DC universe and the Watchmen universe. And then after that, they kind of take out, take it over from there. Huh. And that's where Doomsday Clock comes into play. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's good. Like I said, I'm just waiting, like, patiently for the rest of the issues to come out. Because they're seriously, like, it's been, like, four months since the last issue came out. And this should have been, like, done in a year. Hmm. Dicks. <laughs> so. Left you hanging. Totally. Have you uh, have you watched any of the the Umbrella Academy yet? I have not. Uh, I'm about it's s- in my queue. Six episodes deep. It's it looks like a from like the I I'm sure this is not the right way to describe it, but from the the preview that I watched in the picture, it looks like a cross between like X Men and Mystery Men. <laughs> it kind of feels that way, huh. you know, with a little bit of kind of Watchmen thrown in there a bit. What is the um, tone of that show? Is it serious or is it funny? Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, it's pretty damn serious. Oh, okay, it's very stern. Like they're they're taking it seriously. It was uh, uh, based on a, a Dark Horse comic that was written by Gerard Way from uh, My Chemical Romance. Oh uh, okay, that makes it's, sense because I know he's all over that soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, but it's pretty damn good man um i'm enjoying it thus far I'm, like i said i'm about six six episodes in and ellen page is in it yeah I saw and that. you know i'll kind of watch anything that she's in as well so she doesn't seem to be a lot anymore what's that doesn't seem to be a lot anymore what she, stuff that she's in Yeah, she's been kind of scarce for a while it seems well she's been doing a lot of activism and stuff yeah so but um that and she's been doing like a bunch of like really like um well I think she kind of got she was gone for like two years like uh 2017 was kind of busy for her but then she did flatliners and got put in movie jail oh yeah so I didn't see that but I remember seeing lots of trailers for right that. yeah and then she, Tallulah what the hell was Tallulah oh she was in a Netflix she was in another Netflix thing hmm so, yeah, Into the Forest, Tiny Detectives. Oh, they put her back into uh, Days of Future Past as uh, Kitty Pride, And they did the, uh, and then they did the Rogue cut. And, oh, that's when they put Rogue back in. Never mind. But still, she was in, uh, she was in Days of Future's Past. And that was really, like, the last big thing that she did. It looks like she's been doing a bunch of indie stuff. Huh. So, now she's... She's got uh, another TV series, Tales of the City, which is coming out eventually at some point this year. Hmm. I'm not familiar with that either. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's got a decent cast, though. I mean, it's got Ellen Page, uh, Laura Linney, Olympia Dukakis. Some big names. Some, yeah. Molly Ringwald. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. Yeah. So, but yeah, I I enjoy it. I think uh, I think it's been pretty good uh, so far. So I'm I'm really really interested because there just seems to be like a bunch of uh, what you call it. Just it just seems like there's a lot of stuff that's just completely open. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see where it goes from here. Cool. From where I'm at right now. So because like I said, I'm only like I think there's ten episodes, and I'm like four episodes in or something like that or five episodes in and then um oh i blew through all of uh titans titans which yeah it's that dc show that's on um what do you call it it's on the dc streaming app oh okay and it's basically like a reimagining of the teen titans which has been pretty good um animated very what's that it's animated no it's live action oh interesting yeah, so that's got you know Dick Grayson's Robin and Raven and all of that. That's cool. Um, so watch that. You know, I blew through that. That was pretty good. Huh. So, but so yeah, it's been uh, yeah, I'm just just doing a lot of watching TV, doing nothing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I after like I think two previous false starts, uh, where I got like an episode in and just stopped watching almost immediately. I finally 
am current on Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh, really? Yeah. See, I'm I'm not current on it. I think I think the season before Fox dropped it. Yeah. Was when I stopped watching it. Um. This season that's well, this first season that was on NBC NBC is not very good. Oh really? No. But, oh, but I liked the seasons before a lot. Um Right. I don't know why I put off watching it for so long because I think um what's his face is hilarious, Andy Sandberg. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Um one of my guilty pleasure uh films that I will always, always love more than everybody else that I know is Hot Rod. Dude, Hot Rod is pretty badass it's hysterical. Dude. That movie is funny as hell like that whole weird like surreal cool beans sequence <laughs> it turns into like a techno song yeah <laughs> right and then he's like constantly trying to kill his dad and, uh, you know danny danny mcbride and bill Hader are my my favorites in that yeah dude did you ever watch eastbound and down that's another show that like it took me several several attempts to finally like power through it, but once I once I got once I gained momentum, I was all about it. That show is hilarious. But Kenny Dude, Kenny one... Powers is such a convincing asshole. Like I could not watch it for the longest time because I hated him. Right. Well, I mean, like Danny McBride just pulls that kind of character off. Yes. You know, like I was never a huge Danny McBride fi- fan until I saw that movie. Yeah, he's, he's or that TV show. He's, oh my gosh, I don't know how you could live in that role for that long, <laughs> uh, unless you're actually that person. I, I hear he's actually a pretty nice guy. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> you're out, motherfuckers. What is it? Strike three, motherfucker. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was that was a pretty that 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 was the one that got me introduced to. Uh, Oh, what what's the chick that played his wife in that, or his ex-wife? I don't know. Her, um, I don't know her name. She has like some family sitcom on ABC or something. Yeah, Katie Mixon. Yes. Yeah, I think she's super. Sorry, I I just think she's super hot. <laughs> <laughs> she's like not traditionally, you know, what folks look at. Yeah, for, no, no, what you mean. You know, but. She was like super skinny in the uh in uh, Eastbound and Down though. Mm. So, so I, I I like her much better now. <laughs> so but yeah, I, I actually really uh the uh, American Housewife cuz that's got Deidre Bader in it too. Oh right? yeah. That dude that dude's fucking hilarious. I haven't seen him much either. Yeah, well, he's been doing this TV show for the last three years or so. Yeah, good for him, right? Yeah. Right on. So, any uh, any new music tickling your ear, pussy? Oh, tickling my ear, pussy, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't know about new music per se. More just stuff I've been sort of discovering. Um, our mutual friend, friend of me, Billy. Mm-hmm. Billy Patterson. Oh, God damn it. We'd have to give Billy a shout out in this episode. Uh, yeah, I guess I just did that. Um, he and I have been going like back and forth, just like direct messaging on Facebook about just, uh-huh. just sharing music. And he's introduced me some stuff that I like, some stuff that I don't like at all. Um, right. But he's got a pretty prolific knowledge of electronic music. It's Yeah, it's creepy. <laughs> it's extensive. <laughs> Yeah, that it is. Um, that it is. We were just talking earlier today about our our love for the band Air. Are you familiar with Air? I am familiar with Air. They did like the Virgin Suicide soundtrack. Um, yes, I've been listening to them pretty much all day. I, I'm not. I, I'm long. I'm. I've known them forever, but uh, I haven't listened to them for a long time. Probably not for the last like three or four years. But uh, mm-hmm. it's been been spinning all day. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, as far as definitely want to try to. As far as new music, uh, I don't think I I have anything new that I'm listening to lately. Um, yeah. I've been finding a lot of like sort of no name artists on Spotify. Um, okay. That are part of. I have no idea what the origins of it or why it ever came to be. So there's like this weird. It's not weird. Um, kind of niche, subgenre of electronic music called vaporware. 
uh, okay. uses heavily like uh, like early eighty sounds. Like think like your um, like your Blade Runner type synthesizers, but it's usually that over like the old Vangelis stuff. Yeah, kind of. Except it's less ambient. It's it's put over a beat, but it's a lot of this like similar, very very eighties new wave synthesizer kind of sounds. Um, okay. Put over like hip hop beats, and then they run it all through like a tape machine, so it sounds all warbly. Um, it's not as weird as it sounds. It's actually I find it pretty interesting. Somebody on the internet a couple years ago paired that up with the, like a Simpsons clip, okay, and like somehow tweaked all of the colors so it looks like this crazy psychedelic, like acid trip. And people take the 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 vaporware music and edit it over the the, the fucked up Simpsons clips, and Simpsons sure. Simpsons wave was born. Interesting. Um, if you look it up on YouTube, there's a fuckload of them, and but it's all like musicians doing making music that you've never heard of. And I've been looking all mm-hmm. of them up as many as I could because often they use like um, it sounds like they're listening to jazz records being played out of a phonograph, and then they sample that because it's so like ultra scratchy, like vinyl sounding, and it's like trumpets really? or like jazz guitar, and then they'll do like sort of hip hop beats over that. It's a it's a really interesting sound. Sounds like it. I have, yeah. I have no Four. idea why it ever got paired up with Simpsons videos, though. But I love The Simpsons, so I'm I'm, right. I'm all about it. That's hilarious. Just kind of uh, fit in there somewhere. Yeah. So. One of sometimes it's just like a very very short clip on um, just played on a loop. And one of my favorites is a song put to a clip of a naked Bart Simpson spinning on a clothesline for like two minutes. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Was it taken from like the Simpsons movie? Uh, I think it was an episode. Because I think the only time I think I've ever seen Bart Simpson naked was in the Simpsons movie. I don't remember. I remember. <laughs> I think that was a pretty funny joke in the beginning of that movie where he's skateboarding it with was. no pants and then <laughs> he's covered up by the bushes and then they cover up yes. the rest of him. <laughs> right. Uh I don't remember the naked spinning on the clothesline. I think that was from an episode. I don't remember which one, though. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been digging uh, this album called by You and Me. You and Me. Um, <clears throat> it's it's Pink, the artist Pink. Okay. And I'm a huge Pink fan. I mean, it's well documented, <laughs> but. Uh, they re- she released an album with um this dude named Dallas Green. Dallas and Green. And they did like yeah, he apparently he's in a band called The City in Color. Okay. That's, I'm or, somewhat familiar Color. with their music, sure. Okay. Well, the two of them put out like a folky type album. Huh. And it's it's really really good. So I've been listening to that lately. Um I've been listening to a lot of Pink lately. She just released a new single, just like a one-off single. Oh yeah. Um, but that, and I just dis- finally discovered St. Vincent. Oh, you weren't familiar with her before? I, well, I heard her name and I saw her do her thing with, um, David Byrne at, uh, what's that? David Byrne. No. Well, when Nirvana got inducted oh, into yeah, the yeah, Rock yeah, and yeah, Hall yeah. of Fame, which was great. She came out. And did all apologies with them, yeah, with the surviving members, and that was really all I'd seen of her. Uh, she had actually performed in a group called uh, um, the Polyphonic Spree as well. And Correct. I think <clears throat> last time we spoke, I, I said that I told you that she was one of their guitar players for a while. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Correct. So, like, I guess I saw her when she was playing with them because it was during that era. That's cool. So yeah, so I picked up the uh, Saint Vincent, Saint Vincent on vinyl mm-hmm. not too long ago. And then um, I downloaded the Mass Education, the the newest album, mm-hmm. or the Mass mass Seduction. Yes. yes. And, uh, fuck, dude, I'm, I'm a I'm a St. Vincent fan. That's cool. Have you listened point. to Strange Mercy yet? I have not. That's my favorite, and my favorite song in that is called Cheerleader. Uh, it's, okay. Th- it's very, very big. Like the bass is huge on that song. It's kind of different, okay. a different sound for her, but I really like it. Right on. Yeah. And and then uh, I found out, like, I was listening to a band called the Dead Deads for a minute. Hmm. And it's like this all female rock group, and uh, 
dude, it's fucking good. Nice. Um, so it's called Strange Mercy? Strange said? Mercy, yeah. It was from 2010, 2011, I think. Yeah, it'll show in 2011. All right, I'm downloading that now. Yeah, it's very good. But I love that album. Nice. So, yeah, so that'll be uh, something I'll spin tomorrow. But I just found out that the Dead Deads put out an album called uh, Sketches and Animation. So I'm going to be listening to that tomorrow, too. Nice. Yeah, because the first album, For Your Obliteration, came out in 2016, and that was fucking awesome. Hmm. Like It was a great record. Um, but they're kind of punky, you know. Um, their new album was only 37 minutes long. Hmm. <laughs> like, their debut album was 37 minutes long. That's pretty short. So, yeah. So it's, you know, it's short, gets to the point, you know, and on, on and on to the next thing. Hmm. But you know who I I was exposed to recently too that I was just like okay was Chance the rapper? You aren't familiar. Like, I I had never heard any of his stuff. Sure. So a buddy of mine was like, dude, you got to listen to Coloring Book. I downloaded it. And I'm like, nah. You didn't like it? No, I'm not I'm not a fan. Okay. What didn't you like about it? Um, the production. Really? I thought it was a nice sounding yeah. album. Like, it sounds okay, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it sounds okay, but, like, I'm just done with all this shitty auto-tune that sounds like everybody's drowning underwater. (laughs) And, like, nine nine out of ten, like, guest artists on that album are all fucking auto-tuned, and it's the worst. Hmm. It's just fucking terrible, and I can't, I I just, I, I can't. Hmm. I like it. I like it. Uh, you should. You can download it for free. I think from his SoundCloud, because um, he never put them on streaming and he's never charged money for them. Uh, if you look mm-hmm. look up his SoundCloud, it's called Acid Rap. Um, okay. There's a lot of like old old Chance the Rapper fans that they'll they th- they think that that's the best thing he has done and will probably ever do. It's really good. Really. Yeah. All right. And then there's his first one. I don't remember what it was called. He actually did. Uh, when he was in high school, uh, he had like uh, he he got suspended for a week or something like that, and so he went in the studio and recorded this his first mixtape while he was suspended from school. Really? Yeah. That's that's, that's worth hilarious. that's worth listening to, if only for the novelty of it. That's funny. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> I like him. I don't think he's the best. I don't, I don't think his rapping is particularly impressive. Um, I just like the guy. Yeah, I mean, I like the things that he does, yeah. like, outside of music. Right. You know, I, I, I enjoy, like, you know, you know that he's pumped so much money into the Chicago School District mm-hmm. and, or, you know, into CPS, yeah. and he's really, like, it sounds like he's really, like, truly putting his money where his mouth is, cons- you know, considering his... Uh, uh, his community, you know, the community and the city and all that, which I, I totally have like a lot of respect for that. Yeah. But like, yeah, that that album, I was just like, eh, okay, it's, <laughs> it's good, you know. So. I wonder how I would feel because I haven't listened to it in a long time. I wonder how I would feel about it if I was hearing it for the first time right now too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was a you know, ton, I guess, there was a shitload of hype for that when that when that dropped for a long time. Yeah. Well, when you got Kanye West to come in and do your first song with you, too, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, it kind of, you know, it it's, does its own thing and kind of takes off from there. Yeah. So. I was totally, it was totally bothering me. Dallas Green, who you said you did that project with Pink. Yes. I, I couldn't place his name. He's in, um... Like a, I think they consider it post hardcore, but he's in it. It's basically a hardcore band called Alexis on Fire. I used to listen to them in high school. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with them. He's their front. I, he's I, their front man. Is he really? Yeah. That's crazy to think that now that he's doing this very like quiet, introspective folk album. Yeah. With Pink. I didn't even know City in the Color was him. Yeah, that's crazy. Huh. <clears throat> And then I've been listening to uh, a lot of Jason Isbell lately too. Yeah. Um, he's got an album with uh, with his band, the Four Hundred Unit, that came out in uh, 2017. Yeah, I've heard it. 
Oh my god, dude! That that album just like rips my soul from my body. Yeah, it's like it's just it's really good. Yeah, I saw him last year at the Travoli movie theater in downtown um, in downtown Downers Grove, where it was just him doing a solo acoustic show. It's a weird place for that. It was a very weird place, but I guess XRT does shows there all the time. No, oh, no kidding. Which is like, yeah, but. Uh, but yeah, it was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. Nice. But yeah, he's got the song on the new album, or well, you know, on the um, uh, the four hundred unit album, uh, the Nashville sound called "When We Were v- If We Were Vampires." Yeah, dude, that's like the most romantic song I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. <laughs> like, it seriously is just like it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful song. Because at first, when I first heard it, I was like. If we were vampires, I'm like, what kind of, you know, I'm like, the shit kind of <laughs> twilight bullshit is this, you know? But, like, the other day I actually, like, sat down and listened to it, and I was like, god damn, this song is incredible. I'll just give that one it's... another visit. I haven't listened to it in a long time. I remember liking it a lot, though. Yeah, it's a beautiful album, man. It's a beautiful record. And, you know, our, uh, our, our mutual friend... Um, Matt, Polly, said that, uh, you know, he had posted the song Anxiety a while back, and he's like, this this song perfectly encapsulates what anxiety feels like, mm. and he's not wrong. So, but it's a fucking great album, man. Yeah. Definitely, definitely worth a, another spin, so. I guess something new I have been listening to... Um are you familiar with Pedro the Lion or David Bazan at all? I'm familiar with Pedro the Lion, yes. Right. Pedro the Lion was his old band like in the early 2000s, and then they split up or went on hiatus, and then he, hiatus. And then he, he launched a solo career. And his first solo record was um, it's one called Curse Your Branches. It came out when I was in college. Okay. Um, and it's about like sort of his exit from the church and church world and church life. He grew up like a charismatic, like Pentecostal. So I, I just think he's a really interesting musician already and especially songwriter. Um, but then he got back together with Pedro the Lion and they just put out a new album two or three weeks ago. And it's very, yeah, very good. Yeah, I listened good. to a little bit of it. It's just a, really, I listened to a little bit of it and I was just like, okay. I like it. It's just, yeah. it's a good, simple rock record, but it's more... Mm-hmm. It, it looks. It sounds more like his solo writing uh, sounds okay. than like old Pedro, Pedro the Lion. I don't really love their older records. Um, yeah, they were just they were they were kind of those one of those shoegazer bands, weren't they? Uh, it wasn't that it was? I wouldn't say shoegazy. Um, it was just simple, like stripped down, like indie rock. Okay. Yeah. Um, gotcha. But once he went 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 solo, I think his Dave Bazan's songwriting became exponentially better. Really? Yeah, he's okay. got I think three or four solo records, and they're all pretty good. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I never really followed much of their stuff. So I mean, I knew some dudes when I was working at the record store when the Pedro the Lion stuff would come out, they'd get all like jizzy about it. <laughs> I'm like, all right, whatever. They were very like church controversial because he would have us have like uh, he had like a song with a it's a really great line. Um, uh, the line is like, "You were too busy talking to hear the Holy Spirit tell you to shut the fuck up." <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So he's very con- he's a very controversial figure because he used to play. Uh, like the old Cornerstone Festival that happened down in like like Southern Central Illinois. Yep. Um, and he he got he got kicked off. He got banned from that permanently for bringing up like a, a gallon milk jug that had been emptied out and filled it up with vodka. And he was just chugging it on stage. Really? And they have a no <laughs> they have a no no booze policy there. Oh, of course. Yeah. And he did it to he did it to be an ass. And he was right. uh, he was. Uh, about to hit rock bottom and with like alcoholism, he's he's since I think he's in recovery now. Well, now listening now now hearing that story, I may have to give their stuff a spin. <laughs> <laughs> it's still really good That's songwriting. Hilarious. It's just I would it's, they're kind of like Wilco, where their studio albums just like don't do a ton for me most of the time. But, right, but live they're really great. 
Nice. I've seen them once. They they put on an excellent like rock show. Right on. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, I just uh, got tickets to see a group called Tedeschi Trucks, the Tedeschi Trucks band. Oh, just a little a little group. Yeah, a little Tedes- group. Yeah. They're playing downtown Aurora. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So they just, my buddy Tom got. They just did like their got, like a four or five day residency for the fourth year in a row. Yeah, at uh, the Chicago. Yeah, Theater. those tickets were expensive as hell. Were they? Yeah, the ones I guess downtown Aurora. They weren't that bad. I think it was like fifty bucks after taxes and all. That's that. cool. I've seen them once, and it was it was at like Ravinia. It was awesome. I love I cool. love Derek Trucks. Yeah, yeah, d- like just the 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 craziness of him, like his dad being with the Allman Brothers band, and then he t- comes in and takes over. You know, he does. Some, he started playing with the Allman Brothers as well as just like a young kid. Yeah, you know. So and I yeah, I love I'm, I'm I love Dwayne Allman, but he's a better guitar or uh, Derek Trucks is a better guitar player than than he ever was. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, he also didn't wrap himself around a tree. Right. So <laughs> he he he's had a few more years to hone his craft. Yeah. So have you seen have, right, you, have you seen them before? No, I've never. Oh, no! I'm looking forward to it though. Susan Tedeschi sure. has a has a phenomenal voice. Yeah, she sound, I mean, I remember she when sounds she... like she's just constantly smoking cigarettes and drinking whiskey, and somehow is able to sing like a pro because she's got like this great smoky voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I I've heard her stuff before when she was solo because, uh, um, you know, my uh, the record store I used to work at, Kiss the Sky, like the owner of the store. Steve is a huge blues guy. Mm. And, uh, you know, when her albums would come out, they'd be in heavy rotation at the store. Yeah. So I don't think, I don't think I've ever listened to her solo stuff. I, I knew her name before she, they mm-hmm. got married and they formed the, the new band. Um, right. I used to listen to Derek Truck's solo, like not solo, but his band. Um, right. A shit ton back then. Um, yeah. But I, I've been, extremely impressed with her ever since I've been listening to them. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. It's good stuff. So okay, They're playing with a group called Blackberry Smoke, which is like a southern country fried rock band. I know that. I kind of know them too. I don't know why though. Yeah. I mean, they get played on XRT if you ever listen to XRT. So My wife does. So I may have heard of men. There you go. Yeah. So right on, dude. Yeah. All right, I'm starting to sputter, dude. It's like, <laughs> dude, seriously, like the last couple nights, like since we've been back from this vacation, like I put the boy down to bed mm-hmm. and then I just go crawl into my own bed and go to sleep. I'm like, I'm just tired. I'm going to bed. All right. <laughs> so, well, you just, but, you um, just go enjoy some sleep then. Right on, dude. Um, So, yeah, uh, <laughs> see, as you can tell, I'm like just totally sputtering <laughs> right now. <laughs> but, uh, uh, for Pop Goulash this week, I'm Ruben. I'm Bob. And uh, be kind to one another. Peace. Peace.